Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Growing in grace. That's what we're doing here. That's the name of the podcast. And it's also what we do in this life. We see things sometimes a little differently. We grow in our understanding of things. And the subject of what we've been talking about for the last several weeks here on the Growing in Grace podcast uh, also has to do with some individuals in the scriptures who also went through their own journey of growing in grace. So we'll talk some more about James and Paul and some and Peter and things that had to do with faith and works. I'm Joel Brzezinski, along with Mike Kapler, the Growing in Grace podcast. How's it going, Cap? Very good, Joel. I'm really liking the series that we're doing here right now because... Wow, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... Um, it's been an eye opener for me to be able to talk some of these things out. And, you know, if we can break away, you know, years ago, Joel and I started talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And if you've read my book, Clash of the Covenants, you know, that's kind of a a centerpiece of the book, looking at it through an entirely different lens than what religion has taught us regarding the things that Jesus said. Because again, if you're heading into the Bible, assuming that Jesus is always speaking to you when he's speaking to his disciples, you're going to get messed up. But for some people, that's controversial to say that sort of thing. It doesn't seem to be as much anymore because a lot of people have begun to understand what we were communicating. But we were starting to talk about that many years ago. Uh, And it was like tiptoeing through the tulips, man. It felt like you were walking on light bulbs or something with with religious people (laughs) trying to communicate that. And this feels a little bit like that when we talk about James and Paul and the fact that perhaps they perhaps uh, they didn't see eye to eye at least at different times, uh, on the subject of justification. And I realize that some people are going to have a little trouble with that. But when you look at what Paul said versus what James said, and you're going to try to reconcile that, if we can break away, you mentioned mindset last week, Joel, the Jews were under a certain mindset when it came to Gentiles. Um, If we can break away from the mindset of what we think the Bible is and what it's supposed to be, Uh, and that everything has to agree with each other in there. I'm not saying that we're going to find a a book full of contradictions. It's just that sometimes we get stuck on a few verses here and there, and we start to panic. Uh, And I think if we can break away from the mindset, just like just like we had to break away from the mindset that Jesus wasn't always speaking to us today. We might have to break away from the mindset that everything that's been written by the different people in there has to be in perfect harmony or it's not God's word somehow. It's it's just not truth. It's it's not built on truth. It's not built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And and those are just some, I think, misunderstandings. Something Joel was mentioning toward the end of last week's program, when Peter had that vision, remember in the book of Acts, where God showed him, hey, go ahead and eat this stuff. And Peter said, oh, God, I would never do that. That's unclean. That would be unlawful. It's against the law for me to touch that stuff. And then what did God say? He said, well, don't call unclean what I'm calling clean now. In other words, God was, read between the lines here now, God was telling Peter that he had been released from the law. And you can find that, of course, throughout Paul's writings, heavily in Paul's writings. Because you see, remember what we've talked about for years on this program, Joel, where back in in Deuteronomy and some other places where God said, you can't take away from the law and you can't add to the law. It either all needs to be in place or it all needed to come to an end. It all came to an end. God wasn't just telling Peter to stop avoiding unclean food and and, and it's okay to eat it now. He wasn't just saying, this is a a law that I'm getting rid of, like a line item veto. Uh, He was telling him he was freed from the entire law. And along with that, in company with that, he was telling him, go and meet with these Gentiles, which was also against the law. Peter wouldn't have normally been able to go into their house and eat with them or any of that. And God was, you know, telling him it's okay now. The law came to an end and faith replaced it. That's the beauty of this thing, because the law wasn't based upon faith. You you made a point right before we came on the air here, Joel. Imagine if Peter had written his epistles, if he had written his book before this experience. Peter, who still thought he was under the Jewish law, after all these years after the resurrection, he was going uh, under that assumption. 
without even realizing that he wasn't under the law anymore because Christ replaced the law. He became the end of the law. Peter didn't understand any of that. But what if he had written books to people that got out there and ended up in the Bible before he had this revelation? Perhaps, to some degree, that's what happened with James as he wrote his epistle as one of the earliest ones, uh, well, no doubt, uh, the earliest in the New Testament, the earliest book, first book written. And then later we find where he came to some other conclusions to some degree, but maybe still held to some things that were involving the law. Yeah, right. Quite possible is, you know, we've talked plenty about Acts 15, especially in the earlier part of the series, and how that happening was probably around 20 years-ish into the, into the church where James perhaps had a mindset change, you know, talking about mindsets. Paul and Barnabas came to clear up a matter in the church about whether people needed to be circumcised and keep the law in addition to believing in Jesus. Up to that point, 20 years into the church, there were people who thought that, for one thing, Gentiles, yeah, we don't know about them. And also, well, if they do, if they are going to be saved, they also have to keep the law. So that was 20 years into the church. Now we're looking at Acts 10, which was even before that, and we're looking at Peter. So again, talking about mindsets that they had. We know today, you and I listening, you know, whoever you are who are listening, you know that it's okay to eat bacon, you know, in the church. You know that it's okay to have a pork sandwich. You know that because you've heard of what happened with Peter. But just put yourself in Peter's shoes when this happened to him, this vision in Acts 10, where all kinds of, you know, the sheet came down out of heaven and all kinds of unclean animals came down and a voice came to him and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice spoke a second time saying, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. And this was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven again. So up to that point, again, Jesus had come to the earth. He had ministered. He had gone to the cross. He died. He was raised again the third day. The new covenant began. The gospel began. The good news and Peter was still of the mindset that he could not eat any unclean animal. So you can understand how, again, in the early goings of the body of Christ here, there was a little bit of a misunderstanding on some things. And then, like you said, this wasn't just about what Peter could eat, but it had to do with God declaring that the Gentiles where he was making the Gentiles clean. And Peter went to Cornelius' house and, and all this, that so you can read what happened there. But the point from all this is that James, Peter, and other people, there were, you know, Acts 15 talks about Pharisees who were believers. There were people who did not have a full, accurate understanding of the gospel. And they wrote what they believed. James wrote to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered, who had been scattered, he wrote to them, and indeed, I just imagined in my mind, just think if Peter had written an epistle to the church before Acts 10, you know, before he had this vision about God having cleansed things that were formerly unclean, to put it that way, just think if Peter would have written an epistle, and we'd be reading that today, trying to make Peter make sense, <laughs> trying to make Peter line up with Paul when they wouldn't line up. That's kind of the case that we're making about James. They were believers. They believed in Jesus. We're not saying that James was not saved. We're not saying that Peter was not saved at this point. It's just that they perhaps had a, a, a different understanding. They did. It's clearly seen here that they had a different understanding than Paul. And, and it's okay because these scriptures are simply showing us what happened. They're showing us what happened. James wrote what he, how, how we understood things. And we see Peter, we see this incident with Peter. We see what he believed and how God, through a vision, changed how he saw things. And sometimes, as we grow in grace, our understanding on things changes, and that's okay. It's a good thing. It happens with us, and these people, even though they're Bible characters, <laughs> it also happened with them. You know, James, as we mentioned last week, and, and maybe even before that, 
uh, when James said, all right, Paul, you, you go to the Gentiles, we'll take care of the Jews, you know, uh, you do your thing over there and we'll, we'll do our thing over here. There was still that mindset still in place, Jew versus Gentile, whereas you can see in Paul's writings, there is no longer Jew or Gentile in Christ. That wall that separated the two has been broken down by Christ himself. What was the wall? What was the enmity that was in between Jew and Gentile? It was the law. It was the Mosaic law. Jesus tore it down. You can find this in Ephesians chapter 2. And he made the two, Jew and Gentile, into one in Christ. And uh, again, that's, that's in Ephesians chapter 2 where Paul mentions that. But there was still this division thing that was going on and this debate and circumcision, the the law, Gentiles, Jews, who has to follow what? Because it's true that Paul was called to the Gentiles, but guess what? Because there were, you mentioned Jews being scattered that James wrote to, well, Jews were scattered everywhere, and sometimes when Paul was ministering to Gentiles, he also ended up ministering to Jews and communicating to them the revelation of the freedom Mm -hmm. from that law of bondage and brought into faith and, and grace that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And Paul was getting a lot of persecution for it from people in Jerusalem, from that church, which James was the overseer of. And we're eventually, in the weeks ahead, we're going to get into that story a little bit too. It's absolutely fascinating how Paul tried to reach out eventually at the encouragement of these legalistic Jews who still believed that the, the law was valid and in place. And they forced, I shouldn't say forced, but they convinced Paul to compromise, which would change his life forever, by the way. But we're going to get to that uh, eventually. So, man, there's there's just some really good stuff here when it comes to uh, Paul and James, and I think we're going to be running out of time for this one. But one thing I had in my hip pocket here, Joel, was some <laughs> scriptures we could cover that, that Paul has written on this topic of justification and righteousness as a gift apart from works. Yeah, let's just end with with one of these um, it, that I have in my own hip pocket, and uh, we'll just and then we'll see where <laughs> where this goes. Uh, it's in in uh, part of this I've I've mentioned several times on the podcast in the last few weeks, but Romans four, for if Abraham was justified, if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Verse 4, Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. That verse 4 there, To him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. And so if James... He's saying that works need to work together with faith in order for justification to happen. Then, you know, if works are wages that are counted, de- not counted as grace, but as debt. So in other words, you can have faith, but you also have this debt that you have to pay, this debt of, of works. And so, you know, do they disagree? Do they, do they line up? You know, again, that's for you to decide. We'll we'll talk more about this in the weeks to come right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.